Hi, welcome back to what Jack has made. In this video, I'm going to be going over how we can render the content from our blog posts in our Gatsby application. Now, since the previous video, I've gone ahead and copied over a lot of the existing React components I had in my previous website. So I have um, a ton of source components which are grouped under templates, particles, organisms, molecules, and atoms. Now, this is to follow the atomic structure that um, Brad Frost has, you know, sort of pioneered um, in the web design industry, and I use it in web development as well. Um, and it just helps me sort of, you know, group my components based on how um, large of a structure they are and allows for reusable components to be used across my site. So in it, so there's been quite a lot of changes since then. My website looks a lot more like my previous website. So I'll show you what my blog posts currently look like. So we've got my logo and the navigation, and then we've got the link back to the insights page, which none of these pages exist yet. Um, but we've got the title rendering, and we've got the content rendering as a HTML string. And then at the bottom, we've got my contact form and my footer. Now, we're gonna be doing something a bit different with pages where we're gonna be looking at the blocks used in, um, in our uh, Gutenberg editor. But in our blog posts, we're not gonna to worry too much about it for now. We're just gonna render these as best we can as um, HTML elements. Kind of a bit counterintuitive to what I was saying before, where we don't want to use Gatsby to render HTML strings. We want to be able to create our own individual components. But I'll be showing you how to do that in pages in the next video. For now, I'm just going to show you how we would pass um, HTML um, as components as opposed to a string. So at the moment, my uh, post page template is quite basic. I've got React being imported. Um, the link uh, package from Gatsby, which allows us to create internal links within our application, which are super quick at loading. Um, we have a base template, which if I show you now, this has sort of like the styles and um, configuration, which I want on every single page and post. Um, I need to reduce it a bit so that this CSS lives in its own file, but essentially this is the base template. We have uh, the global style, uh, helmet, which is HTML, um, head tags, SEO data, which I'm going to be updating in a future video, uh, a wrapper, which contains a header and a footer for every page and a contact form if appropriate, and then the children. So everything returned by my post template gets rendered as this.props.children, or when we refactor this, it'll just be children. Um, so any content from here gets wedged in between the header and footer. Then we've got um, some styles coming in from styled components, which I'll cover in a future video, but um, essentially it's a way of writing CSS and JavaScript. And this just contains a lot of the blog post styles that I want on every single blog post. Um, and then we move on to the actual post template itself. So in the previous video, I mentioned how we provide context to each page in our create pages function. And from our page context, I'm grabbing the content and the title from each post and then bringing it into the template itself. So the article intro has the link back to the blog post page and then the H1 title. And then within our article element, we have the content rendering just as a string at the moment. So we don't really want it rendering as a string, we want it rendering as HTML elements. And in order to do so, we're gonna lean on a particle that I've created called parseHTML. So the parseHTML function, essentially, it, it looks at um, a package HTML React Parser. Um, we're also bringing in the link uh, package from Gatsby and a helper function is internal, which just detects whether or not um, the link is uh, an internal link. So if it's got a forward slash at the start, or if it doesn't start with a telephone or mail to link, then it'll be an internal link. And then we've got um, the use relative hook, which um, 
which we will be covering in a future video. So I said I would cover the use relative hook in a future video, but I thought it'd be most appropriate just to add it onto this video. Um, it's a custom hook that I've created using some Gatsby functions um, that I provided, such as the use static query hook and a GraphQL function. So in a previous video, I covered how you would create a static query in a page, but you can also do it as part of a uh, hook function. And what we're saying is, is to query the WordPress schema that we have and get the URL that is being used for the WordPress site and then return it to our function. In our function, if we have a URL passed into our hook, we will go ahead and get the WordPress URL. And then if um, the URL that we were passed into our use relative hook starts with a forward slash, just return it because it's already relative. But if it doesn't start with a forward slash, we will replace any instances of the WordPress URL with nothing. So it's, it can sound a bit tricky, but essentially what we're saying is, is that if we get passed in the link, HTTPS, what Jack has made, dot test, my awesome post, then we're doing a search and replace for this link and saying if we find what HTTPS, what Jack has made test, then replace it with nothing, which leaves us with forward slash my awesome post, which essentially creates a relative link and allows us to use the Gatsby link tag without using an absolute URL or an external link, which completely defeats the point in using a Gatsby link component. So that's the function in a nutshell, and it's really helpful to use to convert any absolute URLs from your you know, WordPress environment to uh, local URLs in your Gatsby environment. Um, for now, what we're doing is essentially we're passing in the HTML string and returning them as components. If it's an anchor tag or has a href attribute, then we're gonna go and have a look at whether or not the link is internal. If it is, return a link tag. If it's not, render an anchor tag. And yeah, if you want, you can just you know use this function um, if you copy my code from GitHub. So to use this function, we need to import it first from um, the particles directory. So import parse HTML from We'll go up a level, up another level, and then particles, and then pass HTML. And then what we want to do is we want to wrap the content data in this pass HTML function. So we might get an error, but if everything's gone okay, seems to have gone okay. Now we have our HTML string being rendered as paragraph tags, and we've got header tags or heading tags, um, we've got iframes. Uh, we should have code examples. And, you know, it's just rendering out the uh, HTML string we've already provided it, which is, you know, exactly what we wanted. So, so yeah, that's how you render out HTML um, strings as HTML elements in your Gatsby or React application. In the next video, I'm going to be showing you um, the component parser function which I've created, which is how we're going to be converting uh, Gutenberg blocks into HTML code and React components.